How do we learn to trust our intuition, Vivian? And how do we learn to distinguish between the voice of our belief systems, conditionings, and the voice of the heart that I call an intuition? Yes, the word intuition is very poorly defined, isn't it? We're not always sure we're talking about the same thing when we're talking about intuition. So I would say that for the purposes of this conversation, we're talking about analysis versus intuition. And so analysis is when you look at a set of facts and the data that you have and you drill in and you make sense of it and you're making sense of fact by fact. And intuition is a different process where you actually bundle everything together and you get a sense of the whole and you get a feeling for the whole. And this can be done via your heart, as you've described, and it can be done by other parts of your brain, the not analytical parts of your brain, and it can be done by your senses. And for me, intuition is when you allow yourself to integrate past experience, past knowledge, and feeling and you start to integrate these other aspects and I have actually made it my business to be able to break intuition into the same kind of steps as analytical and logical thinking. I'm very strong at both you see and I'm not into either or. You want whole brain thinking and I think that intuition is when you give yourself whole brain, whole being thinking. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And I want the bigger picture. I don't want to break down into a detail and miss the big thing. Talk to me for a moment about how you discover crystal healing and crystal surgery. I never heard about crystal surgery. Well, crystal surgery is my own discovery or my own development. I'm the founder of crystal surgery. And what happened was I was in my teaching room. I'm an Alexander teacher. That's a hands-on method for helping people with their posture and their movement. And it helps them with everything from pain to performance. And um, I finished my training in England and I was very successful. I had a very, very busy practice as an Alexander teacher, uh, but I got kidnapped by crystals. I was very busy with my Alexander technique, but the world of energy healing and healing touch, therapeutic touch, and then crystals, that kind of started to infiltrate my consciousness and persuade me. And then one day I was in my teaching room, I was giving someone an Alexander lesson. She was lying on the table because that's how you do Alexander technique. You do some standing and sitting and then you put the person on the table and you work with them on the table. And I put her on the table and then this crystal called me over. It was on the shelf as decor and it called me over and it made me hold it, which I can't explain what I mean by it made me hold it, but it was a compulsion. And so I picked it up and then it It was like, you know how a dog can pull on its lead and and Uh sort of take you for a walk? Well, it felt like it it felt like that. It sort of felt like the crystal was pulling me. And I ended up doing all these different things on this person. And she was actually a, a nun. She was actually the mother superior of her order. She was my client. And we were both, you know, sort of like taken aback. We didn't say a word, not either one of us. And at the end of that, I didn't know what had happened. And I said, were your joints sore? Do you have arthritis? And she said, yes, but I feel better now. And we we both sort of went, oh, you know. And then we actually had some other very, very interesting things happen. But that was my first time that I actually held a crystal and did stuff. And and I did a you know a little bit of exploration with crystals and uh, just general regular stuff that people do. But always when I would be working with the crystals, I would hold them in my hand and do stuff on the person or in their person's energy field. I didn't really know what I was doing. But then somebody told me that Melody was going to be teaching a class in Columbus, Ohio, which is up the road from where I live. I live in Cincinnati. And did I want to do the course in Melodies, the famous author of the Love is in the Earth series of books. And I went to do that workshop. And at the end of that, during that workshop, I asked her, what is it when you hold the crystals and you sort of operate on the person 
using, holding the crystals. And she said, I don't know what that is. That's new. That's your thing. And that's how crystal surgery was born because it turned out that I was doing something that wasn't anything anybody else was specifically doing. And it, it turned into a whole body of knowledge in and of itself. It, I spent 25 years researching the crystal surgery work and documenting it. And I have a YouTube channel with that as well, crystal surgery and crystal healing techniques. And I've actually developed this entire sub-modality of crystal healing called crystal surgery. And we use the crystals as tools in the same way as a surgeon, a physical surgeon uses tools to operate on physical body. I teach people how to operate on etheric tissue of the energy field and the energy body. And it's quite sophisticated and very, very successful.